on this episode of Edge of the Web. Instead of focusing on what can we do to grow SEO, their conversation is on a daily basis, how do we hurt SEO the least? And that's the worst situation Mm. for your SEO team to be in. But I would say many teams, maybe the majority of teams, spend too much of their time, if not all of their time, focusing exclusively on how do we hurt SEO the least on a day-to-day basis. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend-setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Winners of Best Podcast from the Content Marketing Institute for 2017. Here at see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. Okay, uh, welcome back to Edge of the Web Radio, episode 363. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, every week we're actually doing this show where we're interviewing some amazing guests in the digital marketing space uh, and, and, and talk about trending digital marketing news. Uh, we un, uh, we unpack a key metric or a key concept, uh, debunk a lot of myths uh, inside the digital marketing space, let you know what's trending and how, what you can use for immediate action items to be able to improve your, your online visibility, lead conversion and and sundry other tactics that are going to improve your bottom line. So uh, whether you're part of a digital agency or a freelancer or part of a marketing team uh, inside of a corporation, that's what we're going to be talking about today. This show is for you. Be sure to check out all the show information over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. If you're new to the show, welcome on board. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Let us know, hey, if, if you're interested in what we've been doing over the last nine years, we've been talking about so many different tactics, con- content marketing, you, uh, video optimization, uh, uh, lead conversion, uh, local uh, SEO, search engine optimization, international SEO. Uh, with, uh, it, it's just been fantastic, all the different thought leaders that we've been able to in- interview over the course of almost a decade. It's going to be February 11th, I think, of 2021, where we have been, uh, we'll be running a, a, a 10 years on this show. So we're blessed to be able to do it, and we're happy to be able to do it, because uh, it certainly... Uh, it gets us some visibility as an organization here at Site Strategics, but it also keeps our powder dry so we can actually learn from the best talents that are out there. So we we unpack everything that we learn from these shows and deliver it to our own clients over at Site Strategics. You can actually check out all the podcasts over at iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Player FM, TuneIn, uh, Spotify, Spreaker. I don't know any. Uh, we're at uh, Overcast. Um, what else are we, Jacob? Can you remember? I think you named all of them. I did not. I did not. I know there's probably like <laughs> I, five or six I listen more. on Plex, but that's because I, I added the feed myself. Got it. So. Just for yourself. Just for me. Dude, it's just <laughs> like, oh, okay, you're just going to plug I in. I, just, for... I think I just pasted the iTunes <laughs> RSS feed in there, and that worked. Uh, so we do two podcasts a week. What are those podcasts, Jacob? We do the uh, the the guest interview and then a news show. Mm-hmm. Or not show. Yeah, it's a news show. Yeah. Yeah, it's a news show. I'm going to go with that. Um, but the news is, uh, we try to get that out as quick as possible. It's as fresh as we can get it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then the interview, uh, delves more into what they, uh, what they know about and their area of expertise and how it relates to our audience. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, we repurpose what we do on this live, uh, sometimes live broadcast, but this live recording, because we are not asleep or dead while we're recording this. It's live. It is live ish. (laughs) But we don't go streaming live all the time, but we'll actually re- repurpose this, take it to audio, take it to uh, video, di- different video snippets, as well as deliver it over a lot of different content and blog posts and social media. So we're just repurposing what we do uh, here at Site Strategic. So uh, we focus uh, we focus on agile digital marketing here. Uh, our company actually have some core specialties, technical SEO, content marketing, social media, uh, conversion rate optimization, as I've spoken of before. But on top of that, this omni-channel media broadcast approach. So we've actually dug in deep and we were creating this type of content for our clients. Uh, it's not always going to be interview type of client like this, but we actually can get some great aha moments, interview our, our, our client base and be able to use that 
subject matter expertise to be able to create content. It's so much more uh, um, spot on connected to the voice of companies that we work with. So if you're interested in what we do here at the studio, as well as all of such strategic, just give us a call over at 877-SEO for web. That's 877-736-4932. We're Indianapolis based, but we work nationally and internationally as well. So uh, give us a shout. We'll have a free hour of conversation and consultation with you. And we can certainly unpack some key tactics that you could win at uh, immediately for your ongoing online success. Uh, you heard Jacob in the booth. Jacob Man is the studio creative director. He's also helping me uh, punch out some some great media efforts uh, media efforts here on a regular basis at the studio. Right? I do my best. Who are some of the clients that have come through our doors here recently? Are we allowed to name clients on this show? I don't know. How are you? I'm, I'm going to go with. We have a lot of clients <laughs> from various <laughs> kinds of backgrounds. Some sell things. Some sell services. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be as vague as possible. It's fantastic. I, I will say that I've recently been working on a way to uh, obscure someone's identity yep. on our show. That was that was fun and exciting. I don't have a screenshot to show you me, but you can only tell us me because of the spiky hair outline. I was pretty, pretty proud yeah, of that. Yeah, we're doing some silhouettes in here. We're doing some undercover work here in the studio. <laughs> exactly. And we won't let you know who that is. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We are. We are. We are tongue tied. We can. We cannot deliver. Let, can't, can't let you know who we're actually doing this for. That's right. That's what he was talking about. Really, yeah. it's a secret. <laughs> it's uh, a next, secret. Next week, I'll be in the silhouette. Probably. I'm thinking so. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. That would be just that would be spooky. <laughs> All right. Uh, What's well, not a secret is who's going to be coming up on the show here momentarily. We're we're going to be talking to Jessica Bowman, uh, but uh, in the next few weeks uh, we are going to be talking to Tim Schmoyer, Max Yoder of Lessonly, uh, Shama Heider, uh, Julie Bacanini, uh, and John Mueller of Google is uh, coming in on the 24th of August. So we're going to have the trifecta of the the heads of state at, uh, at Google Web Analytics. Uh, and it's going to be I'm, I'm going to have to buy myself a glass of bourbon on that day after the show not before because that's going to be too darn cool I'm totally in <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. So if you're interested in being part of the show or if you're interested, if you represent some talent that would want to be on the show, uh, go ahead and uh, let us know over at info at edge of the web radio.com. Just email us there and we'll certainly uh, work with you and talk to you about how, how that your guests could very well uh, match our listener audience. Uh, set your reminders on YouTube. Whenever, you, whenever we roll out uh, some, some premiere videos, you can get notified about those as well. All right. So that's the show housekeeping. Uh, be sure to check out the news podcast. We cover some great news items, uh, uh, as, especially focused on the Twitter hack. And if you don't know about that, check out that podcast because we uh, dove into that pretty darn quickly. And and, uh, man, that's a scary, scary thing to be able to see that uniformly attacked all these top celebrity uh, accounts. Unbelievable. All right. So with that, we're going to uh, wrap up our housekeeping and pivot around to uh, you know, check out and talk to this week's featured guest. Now it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview with Jessica Bowman, founder and CEO of SEO in house.com. <laughs> Jessica had to uh, listen through that entire intro rant. My gosh, it's getting longer and longer. I'm, 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 as I get older, I'm getting longer and longer on my intros. Have you noticed that? Uh, you know, I was watching the clock. I promised her five to six minutes. You're at 7.55. <laughs> well, I kind of I I took a circuitous route to, to, to get here, you know. <laughs> right. I was picking the daisies. <laughs> Sorry, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It was quite entertaining. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. So we want to introduce Jessica to our audience. Uh, Jessica is a marketer who comes from an IT background and bridging the gap between both project requirements and, and how marketing and IT need to collaborate more effectively. I would say I actually just play nice sometimes because man, they, are, <laughs> they are in the corners of the office, are they not? Yep. Oftentimes. Yes. <laughs> So uh, you're, you've got a diverse experience in project management, website usability, and process analysis. And it gives you kind of an insight into what needs to be tweaked inside a corporate culture at, a, at an enterprise level. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, you've actually uh, put together a, a process and a program, uh, how to transform, transform a, an SEO program into a well-oiled machine uh, with an army of 3,200 people. Man, just thinking about 3,200 people. 
uh, on an SEO marketing team. That just gives me goosebumps. Exactly. And that's amazing. Especially, especially if you only have one or two with an SEO title in the company. Uh, imagine just how much you are able to scale the work. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, but that's that's the point. And that's what you try to get across here is that even though a couple people have SEO in the title, there's an obligation that that so many in the organization have to support SEO. It's not just siloed in, in on one or two person's desk, right? No. In fact, that those one or two people that control SEO or have the title, I should say, they don't really control, but they have the title. Mm -hmm. They actually influence directly very little of what needs to be done for SEO. So when we think about all the activities, the SEO team is really able to change this much. And so they can really do very little. So while there's all these levers that need moved throughout the organization, they can't actually move them. So they become really advisors to others in the company and they're beholden to whether or not those other teams will actually do the right things for SEO. Mm. Now, you know, we're all we're all you know we're all drinking the Kool Aid. We love SEO and mm -hmm. and we know the power of SEO. But there are others in the organization that one are not knowledgeable or dismiss it as an IT task as opposed to a marketing task. And and we certainly want to get into that and and just the perspective of SEO. But uh, but before anything else, what does your job entail? So there's two sides of the equation. Sometimes we do what your typical agency would do, the keyword research, strategy, but the big difference, um, oh, and like technical audits, but the big difference is we don't stop there with the execution. We serve as advisors, but then we look at how do you integrate SEO into the rest of the organization? And that's really what makes us different is that integration of now that we know what needs to be done, mm -hmm. how do we get everyone in the else, everyone else in the company on board with actually doing it day to day? In essence, how do we get those other teams doing their 20% of SEO that's going to make 80% of the impact? There you go. So uh, have you locked them in rooms for a very long period of time? I'm Absolutely. I'm sure <laughs> those are some of the tactics. Town, and when I come in town, it's like an SEO conference at the office. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, so we'll easily do two to four days of SEO training um, for all of the different roles in the company very good. to get them on board. Um, and, and really show them how the things that they're doing are making mistakes. Sometimes it's a snowball effect. Had you done A, it wouldn't have been so bad, but then you did B. And then that wouldn't have been so bad if you hadn't also done C. And together, that's a little portfolio <laughs> of a major problem. <laughs> Well, I can I can imagine uh, some of those conversations and the 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 pallor on some executives' faces when they decide oh. to, to turn off an entire section of their website, not realizing that they just shut down all of their online value. Um, <laughs> so uh, we certainly want to dig, dig in there. But Jessica, how did you get to uh, the position that you're in? Uh, give me a, a bit of your yeah. own history in your own words. You know, I um, I had moved around to lots of different jobs in the company, and um, then my last job was project manager, and it was dissolved. The company loved me, mm -hmm. so they paid me to sit around and interview throughout the organization. And I went around knowing uh, in order to keep that payment, I have to um, actually be able to justify me being here. So I went around asking for jobs, and one guy said, yeah, we want to be in search engines. Why don't you go research that? I think it's called search engine marketing. So I went out and researched that for two weeks and wrote up a report and gave it, turned it in. And they said, is this a full-time job? I said, oh yeah, there's two years of work there. And uh, they gave me the job. So hmm. from there I went, that was at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I then went to business.com and then I went to Yahoo. And when I left Yahoo, I said, you know, I am going to be a consultant offering the kind of service I couldn't find when I was an in-house SEO manager. Hmm. Because if you haven't worked in-house at a large corporation, you it's sometimes hard to get your mind around what that in-house SEO manager actually needs to get mm -hmm. the job done. Mm -hmm. No, no, it, it's it's an incredibly uh, important role right there uh, yeah. is is to to bring together a lot of education, a lot of knowledge that small companies maybe uh, are a good deal more nimble uh, and adept. I mean, you have to you have to be able to bring together multiple teams and and and. Uh, it could easily be mo uh, marginalized as well uh, with all the priorities that each team or in, in, in individual has. So there has to be um, a, a, a position of 
of uh, accountability that SEO is being brought to the table. So it's great that you have that role. Consultancy like that is is always necessary with the organizations uh, in that size. Um, so why do, by and large, and maybe maybe that's maybe this is a false statement, but why do companies, by and large, avoid SEO as part of their mantra of production? You know, um, SEO requires you to do things differently, and SEO requires a little extra time often. Mm -hmm. And in order to pull it off, you've got to remember to pull in the SEO team for requirements. So what typically happens when I really go into an organization to figure out what happened? is SEO wasn't pulled in. By the time they got the requirements, it was too expensive to implement the requirements. So they decided to skip it and go ahead and go live and maybe fix the changes later. Hmm. But later may not happen straight away because now it's in the priority queue with all these other projects. And so too often you look at one change and it's not gonna drive a million dollars in revenue for one change. Mm -hmm. And so it just doesn't compete with other projects. And in SEO, we have to think of a portfolio of changes that gets better success at trying to get into the priority queues. Yeah, on it on its own, it doesn't have the the, the weight of, of a whole new launch of a, a section of the website. Or... Yeah, that's the thing about SEO. It's like um, it's one little thing. Typically, isn't what drives all the traffic or the big lift. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of silver bullets left in SEO when it comes to on-site. But if you start missing a lot of little things or sometimes even three consecutive little things, that's when it starts adding up to a problem. And so you yeah. end up over time just having a, a, a slew of problems. Um, the In the book uh, I talk about, and this is actually from a client, we're dying a death of a thousand paper cuts is what he said. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening. In isolation, they're nothing. And, but together, they're a hemorrhage. Yeah, the, the, the challenge is, is that it's easy to marginalize because of expense. Um, but at the same time, the um, the challenge here is trying trying to get all those changes done after the fact is probably triple or if not quadruple the amount of effort and, and cost. So it's adopting a yeah. discipline. This is what's really important. It's a discipline, a regiment that you just don't let anything go until SEO's reviewed it. In fact, bringing SEO earlier into the, the specs of that particular release um, avoids a huge amount of, of wasted energy and wasted expenditure. And, and, mm -hmm. and just trying to dig yourself out of a hole that you actually put yourself in because you didn't pay, pay attention to That's pagination true. or didn't pay attention to canonicalization. We, we had one client that literally had um, different, uh, uh, different uh, different locations and they had on their site, they had, I think, uh, 30,000 pages and m almost all of that was duplicate blog content for the different mm -hmm. locations, right? Yeah. And the amount of digging that we had to do just to be able to, you know, it was a canonicalization nightmare, but we had to clean all of that out because it just looked like duplicate content and mm -hmm. as legitimate as these locations were, they were just dropping like flies. So, um, yeah, you, you have to embrace that discipline, and it's almost very much like um, saving saving money, right? Is that there's a there's a principle of of uh, as you as you uh, you know as you get your paycheck, you put a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, right? You got, yeah. And and SEO is a is a is a savings that you're putting away to be able to protect yourself, almost like from a level mm -hmm. of insurance, that you're doing it yeah. the right way and that you're going to protect yourself from, from faulty behavior as you deploy things. So you know, um, The best I've ever seen was when I was an SEO manager in-house, mm -hmm. my boss said, look, SEO represents 20% of total, company, to, total revenue on the website. Right. So therefore, SEO gets 20% of every release. Now, sometimes I got a little more and sometimes a little less, but it averaged out to 20% and I got to choose what went into that 20%. And so that was awesome because it's doing exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Every month we're setting aside resources to do all the right things for SEO. We didn't fall into um, major problems. If they were, they were complete accidents mm -hmm. or mistakes because you know some, someone didn't get involved in something. Right, right. Um so it's that it's, it's breaking that mindset of uh, we'll fix it in post <laughs> or we'll fix it later, <laughs> right? Yeah, because exactly. it, it gets marginalized, it gets it's, it gets brushed away, it doesn't have the impact. But if you actually 
ad- adhere to a discipline of recognition that is that. But that that by that twenty percent conversation that you had with uh, your executive executive, that was also kind of an echo chamber, though. At the same time, because that's what it represented at that moment in right. time, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's even strong, you know, if you really took on the discipline here, you should give SEO a larger stake at the table because if you're trying to get earned media as opposed to paid media visibility, yeah. it, you just can't give it what it's actually uh, producing at right. the moment. If you it's only 3% of revenue today, right. but you know it should be 10 or 20, exactly. you can't give it 3%. No, yeah. exactly. You can't you can't give it what it's earning right now. It, it, you have to give it its earning potential yeah. in three to five years, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's great point. So, so let me ask you this: What kind of mistakes do uh, some SEO do you see SEO managers making on a regular basis? You know, I you know, training is is a big thing when it comes to SEO, and everyone knows that in the SEO space. But what I typically see happening is that SEO managers just really fumble at the training. And so they'll do like a presentation or maybe two to development and think they've done SEO training. Well, that's not enough to teach them everything that the developer needs to know about SEO. And then sometimes I look at their training materials and they're very interesting concepts, but people are latching on to the wrong things Hmm. because they're talking about more than what that role needs to do. So like when I go into training, I never talk about the Google updates. They don't need to know about the Google updates. They just need to know what to do. The SEO team needs to know about the Google updates. Mm-hmm. I think that's where I see, you know, a lot of mistakes with the SEO managers. And then another big mistake I see is not being data driven enough. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm seeing an increase in this. So it definitely doesn't apply as a, as a comment to all SEO managers, but I definitely see it to be an issue with many. And uh, I'm seeing other channels becoming more savvy at analytics Mm -hmm. than the SEO managers in the industry. Really? Yeah. I I just definitely feel that um, they're just not up to speed on the analytics. Now, again, that doesn't account for everyone. There are many, many that are savvy and say, no way, that's not the case. But I talk to SEO managers. And in general, um, many of them that are especially intermediate, um, like five years or less, I definitely see them just being a little more focused on the tactics. And then another challenge I see is their tactics people, but they're not so good at strategy. Hmm. And so I just um, spoke with a division of one of my clients in France. And that was the problem. As she's talking, I said, wait a second. It strikes me as the SEO specialist in your division might be good at tasks, but not good at defining the strategy that should be applied to those tasks. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. And she wasn't in SEO. She was just an executive within that organization. And she recognized there's not enough strategy. And so sometimes I think that when we hire as executives, the you know talent, you don't know how to vet what you need. And you don't really know what you need. You just know you need a quote SEO person to fill the fill a, a slot, but you really need to know what skills are truly needed for that slot. So I see, you know, lots of different different issues along the way, but a lot of it's training. Now, then the last big issue I see is focusing on what to do and not how we're doing it. And so I get brought in a lot of times to focus on the, how are we doing it? And so um, I'm doing a project right now and I'm working with different teams throughout the globe um, and throughout the organization. And we're specifically talking about not what you do on the site, but how do we go about doing it on the site? What needs to change in our execution, in our operations, in order for SEO to become a systematic thing that's done every day consistently um, for every project? And so that's really where the money is. If you want a silver bullet in SEO, that's the silver bullet. Not many left, but this is one of them. That's really interesting because I've, I've certainly seen in in boardrooms where you actually have tech resources and, and the like, if you're actually pointing out something that needs to change and you're not going to be regularly delivering the how you go about doing it because then you go into the, the geek channels <laughs> and everybody's eyes around the table that are not plugged into their into their matrix right uh, their eyes start rolling uh, in their in their Absolutely. heads because they just don't know what you're talking about so it's 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 a rarity that you get the chance to deliver that particular message but the how uh, how you get there and the the tactics of how how to execute it and actually re- make it a repeatable function right mm-hmm. that is an incredibly important 
feature that I, that I can assume would always be glossed over. So at, you'll have a board meeting where you go through a SEO audit, you point out all the different errors, uh, you know, JavaScript minification, right? And you're talking about it, you're putting it on the board, that's what we want to attack next. And everybody's nodding their heads, they all walk away, and they're all holding up their hands going, okay, how do we go about doing that? Yep. But there's even further upstream from that mm -hmm. is how do we make sure that SEO gets pulled in anytime there's JavaScript, right? So getting it into the process that sure. people actually know when to pull in SEO. And that's where I see, when I talk about the operations are some of the biggest problems, I see SEO managers, when there's momentum around SEO, they focus on what to do. And it is almost like SEO will become a one hit wonder at that point. Instead, what you want to do is focus on integrating SEO into the process. Mm -hmm. You can do a few changes on the site, but focus on building the piping for SEO to work well. And so I have one client who brought me in a couple of years ago and um, I gave her the book uh, that I wrote and I kept talking about process and she kept talking about projects, you know, things that need to get done on the site. So finally, I worked with her for almost a year right. and at like month 10, she said, Jessica, I finally read your book. And uh, I did it wrong. You're right. I should have been focusing on the process. And that's why I'm having all the pushback. And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So when she left that company, she brought to the, went to the next company and said, we're doing it right this time. We're focusing on process. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And and that I wanted to actually unpack that a little bit further. Get, getting SEO in, involved in projects at an earlier level uh, yes. in the planning stage, as opposed to, uh, I, can, I can imagine that... Um, if they are, if SEO teams or an SEO sometimes is getting brought in, it's reviewing something after something's already pulled together, produced, and they're almost wanting to get, uh, you know, some sort of SEO blessing or something like that yeah. to roll it out. And, and, and they're, they're pulling their hair out of their head because had they been brought into the process earlier, a, mm -hmm. lot of, a lot of uh, a lot of problems would have been avoided, but they would yeah. have been able to actually even capitalize on SEO strategy, not just tactics. Because when it gets down to it, if you're at the end of the in, end of the uh, conveyor belt, all you can do is try to execute a couple tactics to make this look a yeah. little bit nicer from an SEO standpoint, right? Yeah, and it puts companies into a position where the SEO team, instead of focusing on what can we do to grow SEO, right. their conversation is on a daily basis, how do we hurt SEO the least? And that's the worst situation mm. for your SEO team to be in. But I would say <laughs> many teams, maybe the majority of teams, spend too much of their time, if not all of their time, focusing exclusively on how do we hurt SEO the least on a day-to-day -day basis? But that's not actually finding opportunities to excel. You're you're just trying to to not not put more holes in the ship. Yeah, or put as few holes as possible. Oh my lord. Yeah, like you. I I, I work on lots of projects where mm -hmm. we know there's going to be holes in the ship. Like, how can we hurt the least? And so it's. It's triage not to not have any, it's triage to have as few as possible. But we know we're gonna go out with, you know, I talk about a death of a thousand paper cuts. Mm -hmm. We might know in one release, we're gonna go out with 10 or 20 paper cuts. Hmm. But let's make sure we don't go out with 100. All right, but that that in, that necessitates that you're, you've got tools to be able to audit those paper cuts and be able to see those paper cuts. There's so many times where a team will actually release and not, even know they're actually hurting themselves so so much. So what kind of red flags could be could be adopted to be able to have some sort of check? Uh, in, in again, we're talking so, somewhat uh, uh, ambiguous type of terms because all there's so many different scenarios for for corporations and and, and all sites are so different. But right. uh, what type of process should there there be uh, to be able to have some sort of of failover, some sort of red flag check uh, mm -hmm. as you're rolling out new content regularly? I think uh, the most obvious is do regression testing for SEO, which few companies actually do. Mm -hmm. So that means whenever you have a ticket that has SEO requirements, you put in there as a requirement, we need to set up regression testing for this. Sometimes it can be automated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it has to be manual. But if you're not careful, what will happen, and this happens a lot, where companies will implement something for SEO, and then a few months later, it goes away. Why did it go away? Because someone didn't know they needed to protect it, yeah. and no one was testing for it. 
So I see this as another major problem that happens all the time. Um, Another thing is um, uh, not everything is detectable through tools. Mm -hmm. So I even one time asked some of the top SEO SEO consultants at a conference, what tools do you use for SEO? What's in your toolbox? And I can't tell you the number of people who told me I use very few tools. I study the site myself. It's all manual. And I would say that's the same for me, almost exclusively, not totally exclusively, but you have to manually study the data to determine what issues might be there might be and to define action items. And there are some some enterprise level tools that have some of that, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely not enough to keep you out of trouble when it comes to SEO. And so you have to actually just study the data, like do a screaming frog crawl. Most of my audits, I spend the majority of my time studying what comes out of the of a, a website crawl mm. to determine mm. what the issues are. So for example, one site um, I crawled recently, I was studying the site and by studying the crawl, I realized that they had like 56% of their site, I think was canonicalizing to HTTP URLs. Well, then, you know, that told me something. A tool wouldn't say, oh, you're canonicalizing to HTTP. They usually just show you what you're canonicalizing to. You have to interpret that data for problems. You know, it was like a large percent was HTTP, another percent were redirects that maybe weren't HTTP. And so Google didn't know how to index their site. That one little problem caused their site to be indexed on HTTP sometimes and ranking and getting traffic and sometimes on HTTPS. And that was just an example of, you know, just not protecting the canonical tag. Absolutely. Absolutely. So translating that tactic, getting it up the chain for an executive to understand has been the bane of SEO's existence Mm -hmm. uh, is trying to, you're literally speaking a different language to uh, the executive team that's going to give you your budget, right? Yeah. So um, you you offer up a number of pillars in your book regarding SEO, uh, as well as uh, operational methods inside it, and and it, the the pillars um, that you that you brought to the to the reader's attention are uh, uh, crawling and indexing content, internal links, external links and mentions, social media activity, and user experience. So each of those areas have so many nuances to them uh, mm-hmm. and and communicating the the factors inside of them can almost be uh, in, in incalculably painful trying to get that across to a C levels understanding. So how do you how do you how do you unpack these key pillars because you got to get buy in from the execs to be able to act upon these. For example, I mean, just user experience whenever, whenever an exec, not to, not to marginalize their depth of knowledge, but if, if they, if, if, if I, I've heard it so, so often that, well, it looks fine on my phone or it looks fine yeah. whenever I look at it and they don't have the understanding that there's so many more dimensions to how our user experience can be measured. How do you, uh, how do you train the C level to understand the value of these? Yeah, so um, I don't remember if this is in my book, but I know I spoke about it at a conference where um, the framework basically becomes a scorecard for your strategy. I'm just looking to see. I can't remember if it made it in. I don't think it did. But yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here are. Let me get that front camera. There we go. Here are the ten pillars. And so you can't see them. I'm trying. I don't think I'll get them clear. But um, these are the black strategies and tactics on the website. Mm -hmm. Um, The white are your operations. And what you do is you put um, in this matrix, you put on here all the different strategies, or you could even identify issues. And then you score them high, medium, low, according to the pillar. Mm -hmm. Let me get that back over there in front of the camera. There we go. According to the pillar. So when I did this for a client, um, this was probably the first time I used it this way for a client. I'll never forget the conversation changed instantly from what's wrong with SEO and why isn't it moving to, oh, what do we need to do to change that? Hmm. Because they understood we have a problem with how we're implementing technical SEO. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with 
how we're addressing all the fat SEO factors related to writing. Or we're we're not even working on this user experience pillar for SEO. Right. We think we're doing user experience and we are, but we're thinking about it from the perspective of somebody coming to the homepage or maybe mm-hmm. somebody coming in from an email campaign, but we're not looking at it, somebody coming in from a search engine, uh, search engine landing or search results page. Right, 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 and so right. when you start to build this out, it really starts to communicate to, to executives without having to get into the weeds of, we've got problems with how we're implementing canonical tags. We've got this going on, we've got that going on. Mm-hmm. And sometimes this data here, I'll put, it might be, um, how aggressively we're pursuing something so we can see their gaps in the strategy. Or sometimes you could put in the problems we're experiencing. And so you can see why we're not doing very well because we keep messing up in certain pillars. Got it. Got it. So basically translating it into a grid, getting it into an environment where um, it can be considered not so much a concept, but a a tactic of, okay, we're not spending enough time or budget here. This is yeah. what's important. That's, that's actually going to raise the, the the equalizer bar up this particular far. This, so you, you do have to speak in metaphors a number of times Absolutely. to be able to, to get the point across. But you also need to be able to put together the playbook uh, that they can actually get their arms around. Because, again, mm-hmm. sea levels uh, are, are great at moving things when you actually te- show them what to move, right? Yes. And, and another thing that um, I have in the book um, are all the different roles that need to be involved in SEO. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so good at that. There we go all the different roles. And I think this is somewhere on our website too, but basically who should be in your SEO army? Got it. Uh, There we go. And so when we look at this, this is a whole page of roles. And so it ranges from business sponsors to QA testers. Um, uh, I think even QA testers, those that build testing automation, nobody trains them on SEO yet. (laughs) Those are the ones that can build the automated SEO regression testing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, merchandising managers, AB, AB testers, all these different roles that you don't necessarily think of for SEO training. So they miss out. They're not getting their 20% that's going to make 80% of the impact. And so when you start communicating with executives, exactly who are all the people that need to be doing something for SEO, that's when they start to realize, oh, this is so much bigger than I understood it to be. Right. You, I, you know, I don't know that I tell them what every role needs to, to do, but like I'm doing an audit now and they specifically said, I need you to tell me what every role in our company should be doing for SEO. And wow. so they're going to get that as a deliverable so that then they can take that to executives or directors over each area and say, these are the things we need your teams to do for SEO. What has to happen to pull this off? All right. So you just opened up another door for me. That's a, that's, that's <laughs> a great example. And boy, what you want, that's exactly what you want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, uh, is, is having that type of that uh, type of commitment for the entire organization because it is organization wide. It's not Absolutely. one particular as opposed to other types of roles. Um, everybody contributes, and uh, there's there's a number of roles that can contribute that don't even realize they can. For example, uh, SEO strategy and tying into the sales team uh, because they've got boots on the ground information about the pain points of, of their customers and how that could be actually translated into content and optimization and answering those questions on the website itself. Um, there's so many different realms in which SEO uh, strategy and tactics uh, uh, um, exist in a, in a corporation uh, or, a, or in a uh, organization. Um, I guess my question is, how do you also get the buy-in from those individuals that that's, that role is a, a very marginal point of their daily routine and it almost could be considered that, oh, well, uh, SEO Jane or SEO Joe aren't really doing their job. They're kind of spreading it around mm-hmm. everybody else. Um, yeah. Why should I have to do their job for them? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of opening their eyes and making them realize, wait a second, the, the decisions I'm making on a day-to-day basis truly affect SEO. So one of my clients sent me to their office in Panama, mm-hmm. and I trained their team there. They had all these different functions, and they understood my decisions affect SEO so much 
that they even got the guy, they, they came up with the idea that this guy that's creating all the sales material for our sales staff in, in stores, the brick and mortar stores, mm -hmm. their training materials need SEO keywords. And so just by talking to them about the opportunity and, and how these things are missed opportunities. So talking to them about like your keywords should be driven from this part of the company and trickle out. And when you trickle it out, it becomes the message that gets out in the public and will resonate with it because that's what people are seeing. Hmm. I think too many SEO managers focus on, here's what I need you to do for SEO. But what you need to do is show them what is SEO? What can SEO actually do for you? Especially in a companies that are very data driven, there is a lot that you can bring to the table right. that has nothing right. necessarily to do with your traffic data. But SEO is one of the largest focus groups in the world. And so it's free data that can show you exactly what people are looking for, how they're looking for it. It can influence buying decisions. It can influence merchandising decisions, content, um, all of that, like links in the navigation. And so when they truly get that level, mm -hmm. that's when they understand, oh, of course I'm going to do this. Merchandisers are some of the easiest usually. But you can also guilt them into, if you don't do this, you are actually going to be bringing down the company. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you, you, you have to also talk to them about um, the risk. So mm -hmm. um, one of my clients, a merchandiser went and changed a category. It went from something like oh, basketballs to sport balls or something right before the holiday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, traffic tanked. In Japan, same company, a, a developer decided to rearrange how they stored code, the mm. code files. Seemingly nothing to do with SEO. It put their JavaScript into a new folder that was excluded by the robust.txt file. So search engines saw a site with zero design applied to it and traffic tanked all of the Christmas holiday. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're sending chills down our spine here and, and they don't know the power they wield and that's a continual education that has to be yeah. and again not fear-mongering but you gotta know you've you've got the power of life and death in your hands uh it's mm -hmm. not the small it's not the small adjustments of the dial that over time yeah. in, in, increase threefold or fourfold fourfold your your organic visibility but you can truly shut down a company uh, absolutely by making these mistakes mm -hmm. and you know sometimes you know we talked about what are seo managers doing wrong I don't see enough SEO managers really monitoring the change queue from, from dev. So when I was an SEO manager, I looked at every single change that came into the queue and I determined, do I care about this change or do I not care about this change? Right. And sometimes I had to go ask, but I was on it. And you know what? I don't see many SEO managers doing that today. I see them expecting other roles to figure out when they need to be pulled in and that doesn't come without mentoring. They're not going to recognize that. And so I think at a minimum, SEO managers should monitor the queue for six months. But you may need to be that that may need to be part of a technical SEO manager's job. No, absolutely. Huh. Um, well, let me let me ask you this here. It, it, there's a discipline that we're talking about. It has to be embraced and it can't be foisted upon different roles. Uh, they have to understand their, their value and their contribution or their lack of contribution to the team and what that can actually affect from a, from a vis visibility standpoint. Are there any type of uh, recommendations that you would have for tools or dashboards or things to be able to incentivize? Because one is actually the conceptual nature of this, but, it, but on the, at, on the tail end, you always want to be able to, reinforce it with the wins, uh, reinforce mm -hmm. what they've been able to accomplish since they've adopted this type of continued yeah. enterprise wide SEO discipline. Yeah. And I, you know, I think a lot of SEO managers don't, don't trickle back down the metrics to the teams that were actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the, the, the teams get so frustrated that, and they tell me this, they tell me this all the time. Cause I, you know, go in and I interview them and I talk to them and work with them and they say, look, we do all these changes for SEO, but I don't actually know or have confidence it's making an impact for SEO. Got it. And as a result of that, especially development, and you wouldn't expect this from development teams, but they come back to me saying, Jessica, I don't actually think they know what they're doing and I don't think they have a strategy. And that may be the furthest thing from the truth. 
But because SEO managers aren't communicating that type of thing out to the rest of the organization, that is the perception. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, briefly, we want to make sure that our audience uh, knows about the Edge newsletter. Uh, just want to let you know, guys, that if you actually text to the number 228, the word 22828, the word Edge Talk, you can actually sign up for the newsletter and you can cover uh, a good deal of what we cover on the show on a daily basis. Some key insights from our guests, just like the one you just heard. So make sure you sign up there or go over to edgeofthewebradio.com and sign up right there. You're going to get uh, some key information on the show on a regular basis. All right. Um, Jessica, want to come around to that one area of conversation, and and I and I teed it up a little bit earlier, but I want to kind of double down on this. What are the executives' um, SEO responsibilities? Um, there's a there's a huge endorsement factor that has to happen, and a buy-in factor that has to come from the top down, right? Yeah. Unpack that Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. So executives really need to focus on getting people to actually get stuff done. Mm -hmm. So in a typical discipline, here's what would happen. You present a concept to the, to the executives. They say, yes, go do it. And the teams that are responsible for it go off and make it happen. The problem is that SEO teams usually have so little influence. They're usually, you know, it might not be culturally appropriate to say, but low man on the totem pole. They are, you know, so low in the organization, they don't have the influence. And I see that consistently at getting people to show up for training, show up for, you know, SEO meetings, making sure SEO is part of the process. Um, so executives need to step in and kind of push the, this and oversee it a little more than they would need to for any other discipline. Hmm. And it shouldn't be that way, but it is, especially when you have an SEO manager um, who has the title of like SEO specialist, SEO manager, or even SEO lead. That's not enough to really drive change to a director or a VP over a division or a section of the company. Right. And so they're, they're just, um, they, they don't have the level of influence needed. So I think executives really need to push the message um, and ensure completion of the things that need to happen. Like, for example, making sure people get trained. You know, they can say, yes, everybody needs to go to this training, but are they confirming that they're, the, the teams under them have been 100% trained? Right. Probably not. You know, I went to one company, it was terrible. 50 people in the room for the technical SEO training and something went off inside of me. I said, how many people of you are actually developers? Three guys raised their hand. Three. I said, where's development? Oh, something happened. And they, they were working on a project. And then this other group had an emergency thing. So we did SEO training for three developers and like wow. 47 people in other, other functions that needed to know technical SEO. That's an executive problem, yeah. right? Yeah. The executive needs to make sure that all those teams are actually trained, that when we have new hires, the new hires get trained. And so now we're launching certification so the companies can actually take a step back and say, it's no longer just about being trained. Mm -hmm. You got to prove that you have the knowledge as well. Good, 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 good. Um, that's incredibly important. And that's that's the top of the pyramid, uh, and that's 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 your book. And we have the book right here, uh, the Executive SEO Playbook. And we got over. We met you at SMX and uh, unpacked yeah. a little bit there. I certainly appreciate um, uh, what you've done in that space because a good deal of that is speaking straight to the SEO SEO uh, executive. Sorry. Exactly. You know, there are plenty of books out there for the SEO person, right. but this is the book, and it's short. I have had. Um, executives, even in the C-suite, tell me they read it in a day. Yep. Well, here's the thing is that this is also a secret weapon for SEOs. So the fact of the matter is that there's there's a number of things. It, this is not a play-by-play -play tactical uh, 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 teaching tool. It is an understanding of the organization that you're in mm -hmm. and how you can actually communicate to C-levels in their language. Yeah. So to speak. Is exactly. that this can actually empower you to be able to look at look at things the way the C levels look at them, process and 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 disciplines, and and more importantly, the bottom line and the the revenue that can be lost, right? And and you can package it in such a way that you can deliver the impact, the importance of mm -hmm. uh, SEO to be adopted uh, organizationally and. 
and uh, you will not fear the ramifications because it actually is, it's not a soft sell, but it certainly is a, a way for for a, a commonality to be able to come across, uh, at, you know, at, from, a, from a conversation and be able to uh, get some champions at the upper management level, right? Yeah, and it, it also helps them understand the challenges that the SEO team is facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So most executives have no idea the opposition that they're facing, but reading this book will show them and, and kind of open their eyes to what's really going on behind the scenes. And that's what executives need to know so that they can help drive that change and then hold teams accountable for actually doing SEO. Mm -hmm. And that's what's not happening. They're kind of expecting the, the managers to do that, but they're not managing the managers to that level of expectation. Hmm. And the book talks about that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, there's a lot here. There's a, certainly a much larger <laughs> conversation. And uh, you're fighting the good fight, obviously. And it's a, it's a tough conversation to have to come in and, and kind of viciously rearrange someone's environment in their organization to be able to adopt a, a principle that doesn't have immediate ROI uh, mm -hmm. implications. Uh, you got to have the measurement tools. You have to be able to have reinforcing yeah. agents to all of the players as opposed, I mean, you could truly uh, uh, cultivate negative sentiment if, if uh, the contributors don't get an understanding of what they're affecting as they're affecting it and uh, from content pub publishing and, and merchandising and the like. Right? Right. Well, um, with that, what are, what would be a kind of a final takeaway? Not not just so much for the book, but but for for the individuals, the executives that are in their organizations that know that SEO is a thing, right? They don't know how to get it adopted into their organization, mm -hmm. and they feel that they're they're losing out to their competitors. They know they are, but they can't really paint the picture. What would be a great piece of advice for that executive? Right. So the biggest um, thing you can do to improve SEO, it, it hands down is one of the last SEO silver bullets is getting your teams trained on SEO. So I was talking to a client this morning who brought me in 10 years ago, and she said, when you left the training, SEO was our culture. Everybody knew when something had an SEO risk and they stopped the conversation pulled in the SEO team. Well, fast forward, you know, almost 10 plus years, mm -hmm. um, they've lost that in their environment. So you want to create that and then you need to hold it and never let that fall. And I think that's one of the biggest things, you know, when you think about making something secure, mm -hmm. making something that works on Safari, um, Edge, Chrome, you don't ever lose that momentum. It stays. Right. Making content that's grammatically correct and on brand, you never lose that momentum. It stays. SEO needs to follow that same kind of flow. It's something we always do, and it's, it becomes the way that we do business. There we go. Very good. Well, um, that should be the clarion call for all execs, is they need to understand that they've got a role and responsibility there, and it, training out of training comes much fruit, right? Yes. And and we certainly uh, applaud you for what you're doing in, in your space. Uh, clear the lanes because we really do need these services and these these best practices adhered to um, to, uh, to to make sure that that SEO the discipline is getting embraced in, yeah. in in the corporate culture. So good job there, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we try to uh, wrap up our, our uh, interviews uh, kind of in the same vein. Uh, what really bugs you about your industry right now? Yeah, I think it's a constant change. I mean, okay, SEO has always changed, but it hasn't changed at the pace it's changing now. So for years and years, technical SEO was not much of a change, really. Mm -hmm. A couple of new things added. But now, because I have an online training course um, for teams that are not SEO teams, but throughout the organization, it is a struggle to keep it up. You have to constantly be making changes because the industry is changing at such a fast pace. And I think that, that that's the thing that bugs me right now is once you learn something and you implement something, you may have to go and tell teams or they may find out that that's no longer important. And they start to lose faith in SEO, I think, right. because of some of that. So I would say that's one of the things that really bugs me um, about the industry. I think the executives, you know, not really knowing how to run SEO, um, 
and, and really struggling with that. That's another thing that um, it just bugs me. And it's not their fault. They're just not really led. It's not something executives know how to do. So they're not talking amongst their peers about this. Hmm. And then the last, I think, would be um, about development, and that's that developers aren't being taught how to code something that's SEO friendly. So again, not necessarily about the industry, Mm -hmm. but something that's not happening in another industry that's really affecting the SEO industry. So I see those as my biggest kind of things that bug me about SEO. Let alone Google updates that uh, drop the entire bottom out of your transmission, right? Yeah. (laughs) There's that too. (laughs) Okay. Well, conversely, what excites you about your industry? So what's exciting um, is, especially with COVID, um, I kind of feel like or expect SEO to become a little bit of the golden child. Mm -hmm. So huge opportunities I expect to be coming because it is one of the cheapest channels, least expensive, most efficient. And so I think what's going to happen is executives are going to be coming to SEO managers to say, how do we grow SEO more because it is um, a greater return on investment and a lower cost per click or per lead. And so I think that's going to be great. What I caution SEO managers with is don't jump on projects, focus on operations, build the pipeline for great SEO in the, in the workflows in the process so that even after the COVID excitement, you're integrated into the workflows. So I would lead with that messaging. Um, So I see too many SEO managers jumping whenever anyone has momentum around SEO, they focus on, oh, now's the chance to get all those projects done. But you become an SEO one hit wonder, right? You you become great. And then you go back to all the same challenges you had before. And then um, I would say what excites me also is unlike ever before, I'm seeing more and more non-SEO teams actually interested in SEO. Hmm. So I used to go in and see get tons of opposition that kind of grumbly writer and mm-hmm. and that exec that that um that developer who tells me a developer can or I'm sorry Google can figure it out I don't see that as much anymore <laughs> so I think there's a, a bit of maturing uh, happening in the in the office around SEO and so they're at least a little more interested in SEO I can't say that's for every company but I'm seeing it more and more which is exciting it makes it a little easier it's like one less mountain you got to move that's in awesome. order for us to do great SEO very cool. Very cool. That's inspiring. It truly is because, you know, <laughs> there's there's a lot of us in the in the field that are in marketing agencies and we kind of uh, reinforce each other. We, you know, we're all uh, from from whole cloth. We're all executing and, and understanding the and appreciating the the, uh, the SEO ramifications. But inside the organization, inside the corporate culture, man, that's another battlefield. And it's a totally different battlefield. Yeah, and, and uh, if we, if you, if you are telling us that there's more and more adoption uh, and appreciation of SEO, then uh, boy, that's 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 heartening to say the least. Yeah, I mean, it's not to say that they can still do it because they're they're overloaded with other things. So this is a frustration that this is like more work. Right. But they get conceptually that they need to do it. Um, uh, that or I just got very good at training. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Well, I mean, we certainly want to promote that training for you. So uh, you have an <laughs> online training course, SEO training course, and SEO certification uh, designed to train and certify all roles uh, of the company wide uh, 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 organization at large organizations. So, what's your sweet spot organization uh, headcount? So um, usually when it comes to training, you're probably looking, some people come in with like 10 people for training, but usually it's like 50 plus um, or more, you know, far more depending on the company size. But most of our clients are global brands. Very good. I would say that's really um, the, the companies that truly need this level of um, attention and across the organization. So there's a whole other appreciation of international SEO as well that needs to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Fully understood. Uh, we give a shout out to our friend uh, Alita Salisa uh, out there. She does a bang up oh, yeah, job. Yeah, she is there. very good international. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, you have a, kind of a, a tailored certification program for large enterprise level companies. You can go check that out at seoinhouse.com forward slash certifications. That's seoinhouse.com forward slash certifications. Uh, any final thoughts for our digital audience, uh, digital marketing audience out there today? No, just focus on consistent training. Don't stop. 
Don't think your one hour lunch and learn is going to do it. Um, and really focus on how. So the examples of what went wrong and why it went wrong and how to actually think about doing SEO. It's the hows that win the game, right? It's the hows. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So if yeah, you got to get them to think about it, think like an SEO. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Edge audience, if you want to follow Jessica, you can follow her on Twitter at Jessica Bowman uh, on LinkedIn, Jessica Bowman as well. Um, we really appreciate your time today and, and good luck in uh, all your training and you're, you're certainly fighting the good fight out there. So we'll, we'll champion you as we come across and, uh, and, and let people know that, uh, you're the one to go to if uh, they are having uh, some internal problems of their organization. Thank you very much. It was great, great being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So be sure to check out, uh, all the training news uh, that we cover over with uh, Jessica Bowman in the bonus podcast episode and the bo bonus YouTube episodes that we execute. Uh, it'll probably be out tomorrow or the next day. Uh, if, if, again, follow uh, Jessica Bowman uh, over on Jessica Bowman on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the, to the Edge of the Web uh, YouTube channel. Certainly would love some feedback on all of the different news items and interviews that we're doing. And if you're really feeling up to it today, we'd certainly appreciate a, a quick review on iTunes. Uh, that's part of the optimization that we need on a regular basis uh, for our podcast to get to people like you. So don't keep us a secret. Uh, give us a, a quick recommendation and uh, and let us know how we're doing over here. So uh, make sure you check out all the must-see videos and much more of the content uh, over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We're going to be talking to Tim Schmoyer, uh, a YouTube entrepreneur extraordinaire, uh, coming up next week. And uh, from all of us over at Edge, uh, stay safe, stay well, and do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.